What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be restoring my 1995 CR250 engine. It's going to get totally disassembled and, and what I'm going to do is vapor blast it clean. If you already are familiar with vapor blasting, this is something I offer. If you want to just go cut to the chase, you can visit my website, njvaporblast.com. Uh, you can see pictures before and afters on there. I got my information where you could link up with me, my email, my phone number. So I'll leave it at that. Here's some befores and we'll get started with this video. Okay, so let's get a good look at this motor before taking this apart. Um, this is from a 1995 CR250. I don't know too much history about it, but this, I do have receipts that the bottom end was just rebuilt. Uh, probably has like, I don't know, 10 hours on it. So I'll probably be reusing a bunch of the parts in the bottom end, but I do want to take this apart just to make sure everything's okay. I do have some stuff I think that should be welded. If you look right here, it looks like there's some JD weld over here and there's a slow leak. So we're going to take it apart, have it welded. Uh, if, if it weren't for that, I probably would just leave it the way it is. But there's also, you'll see spray paint, I guess black spray paint. The frame was black, so I guess they just touched it up or sprayed and got paint all over the motor. This is original paint from the factory. It's like a, kind of looks like a bare aluminum, but this is all the factory paint still on this uh, outer clutch cover, or inner clutch cover, sorry. Uh, the same with the water pump and over here. So you could vapor blast this assembled. I wouldn't recommend it. I've done a bunch. I've done my 450 motor, done a bunch of motors that I actually took apart after vapor blasting um, without getting any media inside. The biggest thing would be getting media, you know, obviously you plug the intake and exhaust ports uh, where the cooling goes. It's very easy to put plugs in there. Um, but when you have something like the rubber seals for where the front sprocket shaft comes out, the shift shaft, it could blow right by that rubber if you spray hard enough over there. So what I do is I put, I have ways to seal all that off and don't spray directly at that stuff. And I've done it, I don't know, maybe 12 times successfully, 12 different motors assembled. Uh, typically nothing bigger than a, a 450 motor I would put in a tank. It's just kind of too heavy and could weigh the tank down. But anyway, I'm gonna start taking this apart. Just wanted everyone to get a good look at it before I do, just to see the condition. Um, you know, real stain, it's power wash. Like if I put two coats of simple green and power wash with a 3200 PSI power washer. Uh, this is as good as I could really get it. So, I mean, it's just stained. Yeah, you know, obviously I could have scrubbed it with something, but you know, it's just, that's just the way it is. It's not gonna get much better than that without vapor blasting, obviously. So right away, I'm stripping this down. I'm noticing that, you know, it was, rebuilt the piston and rings cylinder good thank god the cylinder is in good shape um but you know it also still just looks like it wasn't really done that good the cases when they were split i noticed that there was a bunch of pry marks on there from a screwdriver there's so much carbon buildup in the uh in the exhaust port linkages it's just i mean the oil even looks like super dirty this thing was just not you know i i I had to take it apart and redo this. You know, taking it apart made me made me realize that the main bearings, even though the crank is replaced, the main bearings still kind of felt a little iffy. So I'm happy I did all this. It's worth the effort. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna put this cylinder head in. This is the first stage of vapor blasting. This is the, the stripper tank. It'll help strip paint, remove oxidation, but it leaves you with a, a duller finish. You can adjust the finish in this tank, get it a little bit glossy by adjusting your pressures. But for me, since I have two, I keep it just set at this, at this rate to, to strip things a little quicker than usual. I won't sit here and vapor blast everything so and you know waste time filming all this stuff, but this is a pretty small part that doesn't really take too long doesn't have deep cracks or anything to get into so this goes pretty quick you'll see I'll pull it out when it's all done we'll check it out it's gonna have that matte finish I am gonna do the high gloss finish on the head though but this is just showing you the first stage and I'm doing this just so you get an idea of how long it takes to do you know like a, a part that's 
this size. All right, so here's the head finished from the first stage of vapor blasting, which is the rough finish. You can see it's still wet. Um, in the background, these are some like CL350 carburetors. You can see those bowls. Those are the high gloss finish. That's after the second stage. Well, the one is. Um, this is my clutch cover to the CR250. Accidentally ground it down a little too much, trying to remove these boot scratches. But now it's finished. This is the high gloss finish. I'm going to put this next to the cylinder. The cylinder obviously wasn't touched yet. I still got to take apart the, the exhaust valve linkages. Let me bring this into the light. All right, that's a little better. So here it is. That's the high gloss finish, the two stages of vapor blasting, which is my standard. Um, wow, well, it's just a big difference. So here's the bottom end before it goes in for some vapor blasting, just to get another quick look at it. Yeah, this is uh, pretty crusty. We got some gasket maker stuck here, some grease, some dirt. Really just, I just can't wait to get it in there. It's, I don't even want to look at it. So it's pretty nasty. going to do a little section of this i'm not going to sit here and bore you and vapor blast this whole thing but this is where the paint is some i, I guess it's spray paint but you can see it's kind of coming off take some time you got to keep going back and forth i probably do after this video is done i probably come back at this several times just to make sure all the oxidation is out um and you know it's probably in pretty bad condition even under that spray paint so once the spray paint comes off i'm i still got more to work with and so you can see here, I just did that one little section. It looks pretty good. It looks very even. It's a little bit of gasket make, maker still stuck there near the edge. And here we got a little more done. You can see it's going to take me some time getting all those nooks and crannies by the where the front sprocket saver is. But um, we're just about there. I'll cut to the end. All right, here's one case half down. Getting ready to... Get this thing assembled. Here we got the uh, fresh bearings, all new bearings in the bottom end. It's a quick side by side of the vapor blast and the non vapor blasted with the high gloss finish. And again, here's like the cylinder I showed with the uh, with the matte finish, all finished. Here's that crack I was talking about that had to get welded. Actually, is where the shift fork pin goes. Um, so real quick, I'm gonna cut to the last the last section of the video where it's all complete. I may be repeating myself here in case someone want to skip fast forward. I'll explain the process all over again, but here we go. All right, there it is. The motor is all done. I just finished putting on these pink hoses as the last thing to do. And everything is vapor blasted, rebuilt, got all new bearings in the bottom end. And uh, what I tried differently this time was the satin finish or the first stage of vapor blasting. I have two cabinets. So the first cabinet's kind of just more like a rough vapor blast just to strip everything off. If you have paint or any corrosion, it kind of strips it and leaves it more with like a, you know, it's, it's still kind of shiny. It's not like if you were to sandblast it, it would be really dull, but it's, it's my really high pressure matte finish for the cylinder just to get some contrast. And so it looks more like an OEM untouched part. These cylinders actually, they don't come from the factory, you know, as shiny as this head is. Um, so again, I just wanted to look more like a, a brand new engine that was not totally just vapor blast, even though I do like the look of, you know, how the head is. This is obviously with a two stage vapor blast, same as the case is. Um, and again, I did this uh, reed valve plug over here. Um, but yeah, I'm just really happy with how it came out. This is, I even vapor blasted a little bit of the pipe just to, you know, shine it up. It was brand new, obviously never used. And it was actually just made from Pro Circuit when I ordered it that just came in. So, but you know, it was kind of already getting flash rusted or some surface rust. So I just had to clean that up a little bit, put some WD-40 on there. 
Now I tried to stay away from vapor blasting off the the uh, the weld burns. I'll, I'm sure I'll eventually strip it all down and retorch it when this pipe gets its gets used and abused, I guess, which is a shame. I also these I did not it did not come with one of these spro front sprocket covers, so this is obviously not vapor blasted. As well as this ignition cover is a brand new part. I did. I did not replace the studs. I don't know why, but these rear studs that were taller were like $20 a piece. The front ones were $2. I just left them all. But I did get, uh, I forget what brand it is, but I could probably put a link in the description of where I got a replacement bolt set. I'm pretty sure it was around $25 for all the bolts, all the hardware to replace on this motor, which is totally worth it in my opinion. I couldn't imagine putting those crusty old things back on, even though you can vapor blast them. You are kind of wearing away at that nickel plating. If it's already, if the bolts are already looking pretty rough, that means it's probably already worn off and you just want to replace the bolts again anyway. They'll last a lot longer. And I mean, I can't, I, I couldn't not go with some brand new bolts on here. So I'm going to spin this motor around so you could take a look at the other side. I did have to grind some stuff down on the clutch cover to get those scratches out. But uh, I'll turn it around and come back here. It's hard to turn this with, with one hand filming at the same time. Okay, so I got this again with the cylinder. I really like how the cylinder came out with the matte finish. Again, if anyone were to want to get your parts vapor blasted, it doesn't cost any more uh, to get it with a single stage like that. And it's pretty much the same process, just a different uh, pressure, different tank. And that's really it. The clutch cover, I kind of made a mistake by, I I had to grind it pretty aggressively and I was, I guess, too excited to just get it put back together. But I ground it down with some, some of my wheels and there were a couple real deep scratches, I guess, maybe rocks in between someone's boot that were going this way. Um, and I just had to, I, I wanted to buff them out. You could kind of see my, my grind marks, but it's a lot better than it was. Again, I didn't want to get... I didn't want to replace that cover if it was really fine. I mean, the plastic one was cheap enough to replace, but yeah, again, this is, this bike's going to be ridden or raced. We'll see, we'll see what happens this year, but I really kept telling myself not to go too crazy with this as I do plan on riding the bike. So, I mean, it's already going to be a shame to, this pipe will probably get dented up in the first ride, but it's whatever. It's still worth it. You could always you know, re-vapor blast it and have it looking new, but there it is.